probably starts with me in uh, Revelation chapter 7. And uh, y'all pray for us that uh, what will save me, you know, for those who the Lord will save me, Jesus Christ. And what we have is, is through and by Him. The Bible tells us there in the second Revelation, it talks about the servants that, that God has sealed. And it talks about the, uh, you know, talks about the, the, the 120,000.
fish that's going to come up out of the sea. We say, well, one day we're waiting to get on. But you know, whenever Christ hung on the cross, he said, what? The last thing he said, he said, it is what? It is finished. So we're looking for something to come up. We're looking for more. But he said, to don't go to the prophets. That Jonah in what? In the belly of the whale. In the belly of the fish. In the depth of hell he was brought up. He said he was in the belly of hell and he looked up and he cried for salvation. He cried for the Lord to save him. In the depth of hell he called out to Jesus Christ. And whenever I was lost in the world, I was in the depth of hell calling out to Christ. But it took me a long time to see that. He didn't tackle Jonah that many days. What he was in the belly of hell for three days. Because the Lord had put an army to go down and preach with the middle of and tell them that the judgment is coming. They needed to get right. And what did he do? Whenever he got it upon himself and the Lord made it so hard on him, he couldn't see no way out. And he allowed him to go into hell where he wanted to go because he didn't want to do what the Lord wanted him to do because he turned his back. And what did he do? He wanted to go out on his own. And But what? Jesus Christ had already been there. He knew where John was going. And he let him get into the ship and he paid the fire. John tried to pay his fire to get somewhere else. But the fire has already been paid for us. And that fire is bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can sacrifice bulls and bullets and bullets and all of these things. And he said, what sacrifices? He didn't know he didn't want those things. But it's what the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can save us. But the hearken of our Lord, the hearken of the foul rams are not taken. What? It's salvation of our Lord. I can hearken to the word of God and listen to that. And it's greater than the blood of lambs and the, 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 the blood of bullets. If I just listen and obey the word of God, and it's greater than those sacrifices that any of us can do. But thank God that whenever Christ knocked on our heart's door, he showed us the way. He showed us that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And through and by me, you can be saved. But oh, Johnny goes down there, doesn't he? And he gets in a boat and he gets out there and the waves start sloshing up on it and they start to go on and they start to sink and they start to try to what, lighten up the load of the boat. They start throwing their things that are in the boat off to the side and try to lighten the load. And ain't that we as Christians, we try to do that in our life. We try to lighten the load up. Well, I quit drinking, I quit doing drugs, I quit doing this, we quit doing that. And you can't do it without Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't get away from those things without the help of the Lord. You may go through some rehab, and they may help you with that, but they're not going to save your soul. I'm not saying rehab can't help with alcohol or whatever it may be. That's not what I'm saying. But through the true help can only come through by Jesus Christ. And you get Christ involved in your life and get him involved in your spiritual life, you can be healed from brought up from the depths of hell and be saved going to the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Knowing those things can be there for you if you would only what? Repent and ask Christ to come into your life. And Christian, we could say, well, we've already repented and my work is done. No, whenever we get saved and we repented and Christ saved us, our work is what? Just started. Because we've got to preach and teach Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world, knowing that we've got friends and family that are out there that's not going to accept Him until what? Later on. I may talk to some of your family and they may listen to me and they may not, but it's a choice that they have to make upon what? Upon the truth of our Lord and Savior, knowing that He is the way. And the Bible says, you know, that the, the, the four beasts is going to bow down and worship God. And whenever you look at it, as those beasts come up out of the ocean, it's not talking about boogers and stuff. It's talking about leaders that have came up and that the Lord puts down. But the four beasts that you look at it, it, it is going to bow down and give all glory to God is kind. All kind is God. It is Him. He is that kind. Because all those things... That, that come from the north, south, east, and west. He talks about the, the, the city of gold that is up there. He talks about this, the, the, the city that has the four gates on the north, south, east, and west. But whenever you look at it, time is all God's. And it all gives unto Him. And time bows down to God. But thank goodness that through and by Jesus Christ, we have won out over time, right? Well, we said we're going to die. That's right, Brother Paul. But I want to live with Jesus Christ forever. So I've won out over that death that is going to find me one day. And victory is through by the blood of Christ. And so time has no power over my Lord and Savior. So if I give my heart to God, I'm going to be with Him forever for eternity. So time has no power over us spiritually, but time has power over us physically. Because we're all going to die. And we're coming closer to the end. Knowing that we've had friends and family and loved ones and people that we know of that have passed on maybe this week. But through them by Jesus Christ, they'll go into eternity if they're saved. But the Bible tells them, they find us, so shall what? So shall the judgment. And if the judgment find us lost, going to a devil's hell, so shall the judgment be true. But if the judgment find us covered in the blood, just like this right here, talking in Revelation, got our white robes on, covered by Jesus Christ, then we're what? Settled in heaven. 
And it's a choice today. It's a choice whereby we must stand. Knowing that, it's a true choice. And it's a true judgment. And the Bible tells us that. Every one of elders answered saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And he, I said, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. That, and uh, he said to me, These are they which came out of what? Great tribulation. And have washed their robes in what made them white? In the blood of the Lamb. And he's telling them their revelation. It's just plainly. We say, well, hear people talk about revelation. Well, it's a scary book and this and that. It's no scarier than anything else from the beginning of Genesis. He tells us the beginning. He tells us the middle. And he tells us the end. Because people don't understand it. And he's telling us right there, just like the beginning of Genesis, the only way to get in, those that are robed in righteousness, through them by Jesus Christ, they're going to get in. And the only way that you can wash them is exactly what he said there. Your robe is through them by what? The blood of the Lamb. The only way whereby you must be saved. Whereby we have to get into the gates of glory. Therefore, they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he sitteth on the throne and shall, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. And the Lord is going to be there with us, right? In the gates of glory. But think about it also. Is not the Lord with us here today? Yes, He is. Because if yet, Brother Paul, I'm still watch. The Lord takes and guides me and directs me in the paths of righteousness. And as I look at my life, I could be in the depths of hell right now. And probably whenever I was out in the world, it didn't mean that much. Because I didn't understand. But when I knocked on my heart's door, I saw Jesus Christ. And I knew I, I, knew I needed a Savior. And He saved me. Because he knocks on everybody's heart. And today is the day, the Bible tells us, of salvation. Harden not your heart. But as we look down through time, we see loved ones and we want to say, well, they're, they're in heaven with the Lord. But we know they're out here being heathens. They're lost. They've never accepted Christ in their life. And we put a false pretense up sometimes to try to specify. But the Word of God says, no, you have to be saved by the Lamb of God before you can get in. And it hurts. It's true. But it's true and it hurts. But the Bible tells us, he said, I'll make you my enemy because I tell you what, I tell you what, the truth. And if he tells us the truth, if he's the way, the truth, and the life, from the beginning of the foundation of the world, it's the beginning of the foundation of the end of the world because we know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And through him we must be saved. And in one all these victories, he has never, ever lost a battle. Because whenever David was there, right, David was going out before he ever went to fight with, uh, or, or whenever he was there, and uh, he sent his armies out, and Bathsheba's there, right, she's on top of the roof, and she's cleaning herself, washing herself, and David looks upon her and says she was fair. She was pretty to look upon. And it's not the world like that today to a Christian. David was supposed to be doing something else. He's supposed to be out to battle, but he was on top of the roof. The kings were out doing battle. But whenever what? He was there on the roof, not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And he looked upon a woman, looked upon a sheep. If you think about it on the spiritual time, the leader of the church is there, and he looks at another church. He looks at another church, and what does he do? He goes and lays with the church. He gets out there, and the what? The church has a child. And the church that has a child that is lost, the church itself, false teaching and stuff, that child is going to die. Because it's not born of a free woman. It, Born of a what? Of a bond woman. And we as Christians, we're not in bondage. We're free, right? We're free indeed because the Bible tells us if the Lord makes you free, you're free indeed. Amen. But I'm not in bondage. If a child is brought up in bondage, spiritual now we're talking, then they're lost. But if this church up here, if David is doing what he needs to do, and Bathsheba is what? A good church, then what? The child will be raised. In the church, it will be born in the church. The church, not a church, but the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But when you look at it, David is there and he knows that the child is going to die. And that's how it is, Brother Paul. This church here may prosper for, uh, for many years. But if it ain't got Christ in this church, it's going to die. Eventually, he will die. And as we look at that, Bathsheba is there and the child is what? The child is sick and David knows that the child is sick. And the Lord told him that the child is going to die. But he goes over and he puts on sackcloth and he lays it, you know, face to the ground and he's begging the Lord to save the child. And that's that not what we should do for our lost ones. We should open our hearts down and ask the Lord and pray that they will see that Jesus Christ is the way and the time is coming. And the only way that they can get in is through by Christ. 
And he knew that the child was going to die. And the people that, his, his, his uh, leaders that was there with him and stuff, and his counselors, they saw him there. And what did he do? Whenever he was there, he takes it. He sees a mummery, and the child had died. And the church is the same way. If we see someone out here, a loved one, and we see them what? Murmuring around. They just say they're dead. We need to go out if we can and what? Bring them back in. And let them see that Christ is the way, that the church is the way. Because a lot of them, whenever David was there, and they was looking at him, he said he went out and what fought with a lion and a bear, and he took a lamb, and he took and what did he do? He goes out and gets that lamb back, grabs him by the beard, and kills him, and gets the lamb out of it. And that's how it is with our church. If our church is here and our loved one, one of our Christians goes out and gets devoured by the world, we need to go out as Christians and show them that Christ loves them and try to give them back in. Because the sad thing about it, he may be some of my family, but maybe my kids, and it may be put up, what Lord may put up on your heart to go talk to them. And vice versa, maybe some of your kids that I should be talking to. And wouldn't it be a shame that I would have the chance to talk to some of your kids and the thing about it, they'd be lost and go to a devil's hell because I didn't do the commandment of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The same thing falls upon you because the watchman is upon the gate. And if he ain't telling them that the what? The sword is coming, then the blood is going to be upon us. But if we profess and tell people that Christ is coming back, then the blood is not upon us. Because it's up on them for making the wrong decision. But as David is there, he sees that the child is, is, is dead. He knows because they were talking, bumming amongst themselves. But then whenever David is there, what does he do? He doesn't go out. He gets up and eats and drinks. And he's, what does he do? And they said, well, while the child was alive, you were over here. You were over here with your head down and mumming in sackcloth and ashes and stuff. Why were you like that? And he tells him, said, while the child was alive, he poured his heart out to the Lord. And he asked the Lord to save the child because there was a little bit of hope, right? That the Lord would what? Recant and take and save the child. But whenever you look at it, what does he say? He said, whenever the child died, I knew that the child had died. Because the Lord told him it was going to. But whenever the child died, he said, I can't go. I can't take and bring him back. And he can't because death finds you so shut of judgment. But what does he say? He said, I can go. To him. And that's exactly right, Brother Paul. The only way we can get to him is through him by Jesus Christ. The only way we can get to the other side is through him by Jesus Christ. And as that child is born to a free woman, it's going to hell. Because what? It's in the church. The church. Not, not Philadelphia. It's in God's church. Jesus Christ's church. And think about it. Where does God dwell? In the heart. He says that in Revelation. That he dwells within the heart. His temple isn't somewhere over there that somebody has to go get it and tell you where it is, Brother Paul. They don't have to go tell you and bring it back and show you where it is because it dwells within their heart. We know where the temple of God is because it's in our heart. And he shows us that because why the Holy Spirit touches us when we get out here and do the wrong things. It shows us that we're of the, the what? The free woman. That we've been set free from Egypt. And Babylon, we don't, don't dwell in those places anymore. We dwell in the house of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the church. And I'm not talking about the building here. I'm talking about the church of God, which is what? The only church that we have to belong to. And I'm not saying don't belong to Philadelphia. That ain't what I'm saying. But we better make sure that we're rooted and grounded in the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because without that, we're not getting in. No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody teaches, it's only Jesus Christ. And he said, and, and, and in Timothy there, he said, For well, God hath what? Not given us the spirit of fear, he didn't give us the spirit of fear. That's in, that's in uh, the second Timothy 1 and 7. He said he didn't give us the spirit of fear. And if you're looking at the lives, you know, we say, well, what if this comes upon us? What if that comes upon us? And it very well may well happen. But what does he give us? Look at that next verse right there. That next little part of that. But the, of the power of love and of a sound what? And of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us. Now right here, does this right here, number nine, he goes right along with Revelation right there, those ones that are robed in what? In white, made white by the blood of the Lamb, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our words, but according to his own, not our works now, but to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before what? Before the world began. 
So that puts Christ again before the world, right? Before the world ever began, before this thing was spoken into existence, there was a man named Jesus Christ sitting with the Father, knowing that I needed a Savior. He was sacrificed before the world would ever form. The blood was there, knowing that I needed a sacrifice, and if they bulls and bullocks, he did not require it. He wanted a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And I'm not sold in fear. I'm sold in what victory, he tells us. In power of God. And if we look at the power of God, and there's no power besides him. None other. None that can stand against God. You can only stand with God. Because in Revelation, he also said, tell them, let them run to the rocks. Let them run to their gods. Let them run to the mountain. And try to hide from the wrath of the Lamb to come. And they can't do it. They can run. And they may try to hide. John tried to do the same thing, right? He tried to hide from the Lord because he wasn't going down to the minimum. And you see what it cost him. Three days in the belly of hell. And then he finally got what? Got under conviction and asked the Lord to, to get him out of hell and bring him back up. And he, the fish vomited him out. Then vomited him out in the ocean, brother Paul. Then vomited him out out here. But it tells us that it vomited him out on what? On dry ground. On dry ground. And we as Christians, we don't walk, walk in the mud, do we? We walk on dry ground. We walk in the Spirit. We're not walking out here stumbling and, and spinning our feet in the mud. We walk on Jesus Christ. Knowing that, we can stand boldly in the, in the acknowledgement, knowing that that appropriation, which is an agreement with our Lord, that He will save us if we will just hold on until the end. If we will just hold and making sure that He is what? The way, the truth, and the light in my heart. I have to humble my heart and accept him knowing that those things are going to be there. The problems are going to be there. There's going to be death in their families. You might as well get prepared for that. But the only preparation that we can do is what? Through by Jesus Christ. Making sure that we're there whenever those roads are looked upon and it's applied to my life. Because whenever Christ was on the cross and they tried to separate his road, right? Try to split it up. Try to cast lots for it and change it. But they couldn't. It was woven from top to bottom. From the top of our Lord and God all the way down to Jesus Christ. And it came all the way down to us for us to put on. And what? It would never ever be kinked. It would never ever be blemished. It would never ever have a spot on it as long as I accept Jesus Christ and do what I need to do. His road won't. Mine may mess up sometimes because I'm a knucklehead and I mess up. But thank God I can always repent and ask for forgiveness. Because Christ is sitting there by the side of the Father making what? Intercession. The blood is applied to his life or her life and they messed up. Yes, he'd go now. But what did he do? David was the same thing, right? David did the same thing. David messed up. And he gave him a change. Saul was there. And Samuel had went and told him. He told him to go out. They were getting ready to do battle with a Abimelech. A billion. A billion, I believe. I, I know I messed it up. And he's getting ready to go out and do battle. And he tells him, he said, go out and kill everything. Cleanse the land. Men, women, children, everything. Oxen and everything. But what does he do? He goes out. And he starts, and he starts to kill them. But Adon, Adon, he saves him, and all, and, and, and Israel saves all the good things, all the, 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 fine, the fine sheep and the fine bull and this and that. Saves all the good things. Because what did they, they say? And they, Samuel goes and talks to him and tells him, what have you done? Samuel? What is these cows? What is this mummering and mooing and stuff? He hears it. I hear this in my ears. And he said, well, we saved this for what? For the Lord to sacrifice to God. But the Lord didn't tell him to do that, did he? The Lord told him to go cleanse it all out and get rid of it. Ain't that what the Lord tells us to do in our lives? Does he not tell us to cleanse this garbage out of our lives? Because he takes it from us, doesn't he? He takes this garbage and trash from us. He, and I, I say, well, Lord, I want to say this good stuff, Paul, because this is good and I'm going to sacrifice it to you. I can't because there's nothing good in me at all. The best I do, the Bible tells us, is filthy rags. And I can try to take and do like he did. I can try to take and what? Save the good things that I think is good in my life. And I'll save those and I'll give them to the Lord. He don't want that. He wants a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And there's nothing good I can give him. The only thing that is good in me, Brother Paul, is Jesus Christ. Amen. So I can do sacrifices. I can try to do that. But that is not what the Lord said. I don't want that. He said, kill it all and get rid of it. And that's how it is in their lives. He takes it from us, don't he? 
but we try to put a little bit over here in the corner of our heart, maybe or in the back of our mind. God is greater than your heart. You know that? Well, my heart will lead me. Don't follow your heart, because your heart will lead you astray. Jesus Christ says, what? Well, follow me. Because I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. So I try to set these things over here, maybe, in the back of my mind or my heart, and I'll do a good sacrifice to the Lord. Lord, I'm saving this, because this is good. He said, no, ain't nothing good. None good. Except what? Except me. And through by Him, we can. Now think about that. Ain't that how it is, Christian? Don't we think that there are good things? And we're going to set them aside, Lord. I can do this. I can use this for you. If I get this, I can use it for your upkeep. No, maybe that ain't what the Lord wants. Be led and guided by what? By the Spirit. And if we're led and guided by the Spirit, we will what? Make heaven our home. And that's what we're working for. We're working for death to find us, the physical death. And as soon as it does, if we're saved, the Bible tells us the judgment's going to be there and we will make heaven our home. But if we ain't got Christ, ain't got that robe on, we ain't seen up there in heaven with the robe of righteousness on, we're going to what? Fall short and go to the devil's hell. And the only thing that separates us from the depths of hell is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. Y'all pray for me and my family? That's more taken. Family members that are out there and they're lost, meet Jesus Christ in their life. Don't pray for us. Ask the Lord to save us. Take, make sure that we're always doing what we need to do. And ask the Lord to take it and be a light in our lives, right? That we can take and let someone see that Jesus is the way in their heart and that He's the only way, nothing going by us, Brother Paul, but what Christ has done in us and what Christ has done for us. He set us up and showed us the way, and it's not on Him anymore. It's on us to hold on. It's on us to work and go out and let the world see that there is something better, and it is Jesus Christ.